you know, it's a pretty cool name for a theory of price going up. The super cycle theory, man, up forever, guys. But does it actually make any sense or is it actually a very dangerous theory that's probably going to end up trapping a lot of investors into not selling and losing all their damn money again? Are there reasonable arguments to be made for crypto prices going up? from now on basically forever without any heavy corrections. Well, let's talk about some arguments that put real weight behind the super cycle theory while also trying to keep both our feet firmly on the damn ground because these kind of theories can really delude you to an extent. Talking about the super cycle theory just gives me deja vu from 2021 all over again. When markets were so damn bullish, the term super cycle popped up left, right, and center. It was the hypothesis that extended bullish market phases for crypto. They're here, they're upon us, and they're going to go up forever. Much longer, at least, than the typical four-year cycle theory would have us to believe, the one that we've grown to love and sometimes even hate a little bit. Analysts back then reasoned that crypto is becoming one of the big boy assets. The big boy pants are on, and it's on the verge of becoming mainstream, and therefore will basically go only up forever. The institutions are here, corporations are here. They don't have paper hands. They're just going to diamond hand forever. And in this new market environment, which acts more like traditional asset classes, we might say, we're not going to see 80% corrections anymore. Famous last words. As in 2022, the price crashed almost as hard as all cycles before. That time was not different. This time will also probably not be different. It appears we are still in the clockwork like four year cycles for Bitcoin for now anyway, but we must keep all options open before talking about what a super cycle in crypto would actually look like. Let's first look at some stocks that display super cycle like behavior. Apple's super cycle in particular is what we're going to start off with. So here's the chart of Apple's stock on a log scale. As you can see, since 2010, it's basically just gone up forever. Really, it's pretty crazy. Well, the price pulsates up and down. There's no clear four-year cycle as we're used to in Bitcoin. Also, the drawdowns are much less violent for Apple now. The largest drawdown for Apple in 15 years is a 45% correction. Go back to the early days, there were more violent corrections in the earlier days of its trading. Three other corrections in this time period have been in the 30-40% range, so it's still pretty big volatility. And here's Amazon throughout the years, a 40x between 2010 and 2022. Yo, what is up, Amazon? That's crazy. Same thing. No clear cycle really in play here. Basically just up only. But with a few 30 to 35% drawdowns only in 2022, came a 50% plus retrace. Amazon is now trying to reclaim the channel. Now, what explains these kinds of just crazy price action moments, this continuous trends? Well, it's adoption, it's network growth, it's massive success. The success of a company such as Apple, it's not just about the hardware. It also comes from creating an ecosystem of users together who can exchange info through the network. Apple users make the company valuable. Now, one formal way to express this is called Met. Calf's law, which states the value of a social network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users of the system. So 10 times more users, 100 times more value. And payment networks time to talk Bitcoin, such as Bitcoin are also communication networks. After all, payment is a form of communication. For reference, here is the BTC chart since 2013 on a log scale. The larger the number of people in the network, the more valuable the Bitcoin network becomes and is doing so exponentially. That explains the insane gains. Obviously, we love insane gains around here. BTC, like Apple and Amazon, is moving within a huge channel. But within the channel, the moves are much more cyclical than the Apple chart appears to be, which the Bitcoin having is supposed to explain. We can also factor in four-year liquidity cycles. Also, the upswings and downturns have been much more violent compared to these big cap stocks. In 2013, 2014, BTC saw an 86% downturn, while the most recent bear market downturn was less deep. Guys, it was only 78% this time. Child's play. What explains the extreme pullbacks, of course, is that price front runs network growth too much. What the super cycle theory states is that the future BTC chart and charts of blue chips like Ethereum, maybe even Solana, would start to look more like the chart of Apple over time, smoother 
Now, before breaking down the arguments in favor of the super cycle theory, here's a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is I trust the number one crypto IRA provider by assets under management, total volume and total number of users. I trust lets you trade crypto under a tax efficient structure, meaning that you can bring over your existing IRA or 401k or whatever and trade like a thousand times and never once hit a taxable event. They have all your favorite coins like Bitcoin, Solana, and even Dogecoin. They even offer real gold and real silver via the partnership with Kitco. You can start enjoying 365 day a year, 24-7 tax-free crypto trading today and use that link down below in the description to claim your $100 funding bonus. Now let's talk about arguments, the pro super cycle arguments. As mentioned, one argument for a super cycle and smoother future price action is, of course, increased institutional acceptance and investment. Bitcoin ETFs, anyone? Previous cycles, we did see some institutions investing. We had different funds. We had you know, MicroStrategy. You know, they came in to the space with their big giant balls, right? And bought a bunch of Bitcoin. We had our loan small pension fund out there buying Bitcoin too. But unfortunately, most of the trading volume came from institutions that were uh, over leveraged. We had like degenerate hedge funds such as Three Arrows Capital. Not the kind of exact institutional look or vibe you want to see for a super cycle. In the current cycle, it will hopefully be different. The Bitcoin ETFs in the US do make it easier for institutions to invest. Will we see more sovereign wealth fund activity, more big pension funds this cycle? Is it mainstream adoption time for Bitcoin via ETFs? Well, we'll have to wait and see. If they enter, of course, as the more of them enter, we can expect to see a stronger holder base forming up over time, which reduces volatility. These funds will allocate, let's say, 2% of sort of portfolios into crypto, and that's a big wall of money coming. Sure, these funds will also sell, though. Remember, they have a mandate to rebalance after a big price rise, so you have to keep that in mind, too. They're not just going to diamond hand everything for infinity. But they won't panic sell the bottom either, at least they're a lot less likely to. A second argument has, of course, to do with macro trends, the post-COVID uh, money printing and resulting inflation spike have made many more people aware of just how broken a monetary system is. In an increasingly digital world, people will look for a digital store of value to protect them. Boomers who retire will, of course, transfer wealth over to younger generations. There's something like 84, 85, 86 trillion dollars of money moving down in the next decade or two. Of course, those people are all digital natives. We're going to get it. We have macro tailwinds that are not going to stop anytime soon. One more pro super cycle theory argument, a third argument that has a lot of truth to it is at least potentially is the improved user experience and the increased number of use cases for crypto more broadly and bitcoin more specifically smart wallets are coming which will relieve users of a big burden of storing private keys and a lot of the difficulties involved in using crypto if you want adoption you can't expect everyone to store a 24 word seed phrase in a vault somewhere you need better user friendliness you need to abstract away some of the difficulties and it's happening it's coming very very soon actually just compare the new dApps and the new wallets with those from four years ago light years of difference Finally, there are new use cases such as decentralized physical infrastructure networks, riding the AI trend, all that kind of stuff, which is obviously not going anywhere. Plus, Bitcoin more specifically, seeing huge layer two adoption, BRC20s, runes, all this kind of stuff. It's crazy. Will we see breakout games that incorporate uh, crypto into this cycle as well, getting mass amounts of users on? And of course, real world assets, Black Rocks, Larry Fink wants to tokenize everything and he's the blockchain to do that. Lots of catalysts coming. Reasons for caution. Let's discuss this. So look, we have to look at the flip side here. The first reason, of course, for caution is the old trader wisdom that chants, this time is different. Four most dangerous words in investing. It could, of course, be different this time, but it probably won't be. It's always a little bit different, but it's always kind of the same. While we mid curve this and speculate all we want, which is, of course, fun and useful, the base case should always be that this time's not going to be different. Now, some reasons for caution. First, of course, there's regulatory risk, even though consensus is growing, especially after the Bitcoin ETFs, that a risk of a Bitcoin ban in the USA, for example, is near zero. There is still a pretty strong anti-crypto vibe among US politicians. 
as long as they hold power, as long as these people are still in office, I don't know why these people are in office, but they are, they will try at the very minimum to slow adoption down as much as they can. People in their 80s regulating for the future of technology. Great, great decision, guys. So we saw last cycle how unpredictable events like China banning Bitcoin mining, uh, Elon Musk's energy FUD, all this stuff can quickly turn an uptrend into a sharp downtrend. The markets are very reactive to news. Crypto is still a market that is vulnerable to FUD as we see on a regular basis. Then the new use cases. Indeed, we need new use cases to get upward price pressure beyond just trading meme coins on Solana or Base, although that's a lot of fun, right? But just the use case of gambling, essentially, won't get you a super cycle. It remains to be seen if crypto can actually execute on the use case promises that are being made. Sure, D-Pin, AI coins, we have stuff, you know, Render and Helium. These are successful projects with actual use cases and are getting real world adoption, have a massive potential to really shake things up in the real world. But will they sustainably accrue value over a long time horizon or will they be susceptible to bubble and collapse as well, just following the whole crypto market more broadly? Likely. In fact, it's hard to imagine that AI coins will not go to massive super hyped overvaluation territory before inevitably crashing down 80, 90, 99%. Again, same goes for gaming coins. We hope, of course, that the promised breakthrough crypto game is going to drop and it's going to bring in tens of millions of users. Maybe, maybe not. And if yes, then everyone and their mother will load up on every gaming coin they can possibly get their hands on in such a hype phase. Well, it always leads to a crash, doesn't it? To sum it up, the super cycle theory suggests a phase of continued growth in the cryptocurrency markets driven by massive institutional investment, by new use cases, by enhanced regulatory clarity, and strong macroeconomic wins in the sales with very little corrections in terms of maybe 30, 40, 50%, not 80, 90%. The institutions are coming, and this is an argument in favor of that smoother price action. On the flip side, the altcoin market, especially, especially the altcoin market, and that's roughly half the crypto market, by the way, if you include ETH, is still prone to hyped up bubble madness, which will pop. Look, there's just no way to know, of course, how the market will unfold. And that's what keeps it so damn exciting, doesn't it? The market just keeps screwing with our heads, man. Keeps throwing us these curveballs. And that's all part of the beauty of it. That's part of the fun. Last cycle, most of us were caught up with the euphoria and essentially then caught with our pants down when the blow off top that we were all thinking was going to come. 100K Bitcoin just didn't happen. Some people sell PTSD from this. I get it, which actually might lead us to sell too early this time. It's a tough game. There's no orderly exit in the markets. It's all chaos. Because maybe indeed we will enter a super cycle. And in that case, well, we're going to kick ourselves for selling too early because a lot of the indicators will be there saying it's time to take profits, but oh, actually it's a super cycle. Psych, screwed you. Well, I guess the takeaway here is be prepared for any kind of scenario. So would your buy or sell strategy do fine in case any of these scenarios happen? What if we get the accelerated cycle? We made a video on that. Go watch it. What if we have a normal four-year cycle? We've got a video coming in that. We've also done stuff in the past. Go watch that. Or if, what if it's a super cycle I discussed in this video? You need to know you're going to be good no matter what happens. We can't know the future, but we can be prepared for the outcomes if we have the knowledge and think about it in advance. Thanks for watching.